Yes. Goodbye. The National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis was organized in 1938 to serve you in your fight against poliomyelitis, one of America's most vicious crippling diseases. We have seen many epidemics come and go, but this year's polio epidemic has been the greatest in America's history. We bring you a picture of this struggle, real scenes from 1949's epidemic, tangible evidence of your concern, your care for the afflicted. This is your war of 1949, your fight against infantile paralysis. This is 1949's war against infantile paralysis as seen in Little Rock, Arkansas. These are scenes which have become almost commonplace in hundreds, thousands of communities all over the United States. This year, the enemy, poliomyelitis, struck with such impact and fury that it shook the entire nation. It spread its crippling tentacles from ocean to ocean and border to border. There has been no escape, no immunity, for this is epidemic. As of August 20th, 31 states showed incidents from double to 10 times the number of cases experienced by this date in 1948. 1948, with 27,903 reported cases, recorded the largest polio epidemic in over 30 years. In 1948, the week of September 18th recorded its highest polio incidence with 1,839 cases. But the incidence of 1949 already represents an increase over 1948 of 83%. To what figure this, the worst polio epidemic in history, will take us, we do not know. The estimate, 40,000 cases. We do know that we must accept this challenge of polio. It has closed the gates on normal childhood. It has swept our beaches, stilled our boats, and emptied our parks. With the entertainment centers of Muncie, Indiana closed, its residents set out for the neighboring city of Anderson for relaxation. But infantile paralysis had spread such terror that the city of Anderson threw up a roadblock in an all-out effort to discourage polio's invasion. The invasion was nationwide, striking and spreading over every one of the 48 states, reaching a new high of over 3,400 cases for the week of August 20th. This year, polio has alerted health authorities in communities heretofore barely aware of the disease. Hospitals from coast to coast prepared themselves for expansion in space, personnel, and equipment in anticipation of possible epidemic floods of patients. Already, New York, California, Texas, Michigan, and Illinois were counting them in the thousands. And many other states were expecting the worst, planning for emergency in terms of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, and volunteers. Unprecedented numbers of epidemic aid teams were organized, and an unprecedented need for equipment was beginning to be felt Every type of polio treatment facility was pooled and kept in continuing use, flown from one epidemic area to another as needed and requested. In terms of life-saving respirators, shipments already represent an increase of 340% over the total needs for 1948. In the race against so many possible deaths, 131 new respirators at a cost of almost $2,000 apiece were pressed into action. Through the equipment pools and the state representative services of the National Foundation, 470 emergency requests for iron lungs have been met. In two hospitals in Los Angeles County alone, these machines are now furnishing the breath of life to 72 polio victims. For the second time in two years, polio has struck the nation with unusual violence. But 1949's toll is the blackest in American history. The overwhelming flow of patients and the expenses involved in their care have created a serious emergency. Hundreds of hard-hit communities in every state have already exhausted the funds with which to treat their stricken children and adults. 
It is estimated that the national headquarters of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis will have to advance $16,600,000 to its chapters this year. The 1949 cost of treatment, care, and epidemic aid will reach the staggering total of $31 million. Infantile paralysis is now draining the National Foundation at the rate of $100,000 a day. And at this alarming rate, the fund will be wiped out before the end of this month. To meet this financial crisis, to assure proper treatment for these children, the National Foundation needs $14,500,000. We cannot let this crisis become a disaster. We cannot abandon the afflicted now. Standing by stricken children everywhere are the anxious parents whose families have been, at least temporarily, broken by an unseen enemy about which too little is known. They know they must stand by and fight until the danger is past. These are parents standing outside a hospital isolation ward, hoping for a glimpse of their stricken children. Mr. and Mrs. Briggs of San Angelo, Texas, know what it means to stand and wait and fight discouragement. And when, after what seemed to be an endless time, their little daughter was taken off the critical list. They hurried in to see her. This is a fight to the finish of all parents and all the American people. Because infantile paralysis is a constant threat to young and old alike. Until that day comes when the money you have contributed to research toward the solution of the polio problem buys immunity to the disease itself, we must continue the fight with all our weapons, using every precaution to discourage contagion and the spread of infection. We have real hope for the conquest of poliomyelitis, but the siege is long and painstaking and trying. It is not a matter of time or money alone. It is also a matter of trial and experiment involving the best in scientific brains and the finest, most completely equipped laboratories. In the meantime, all Americans must pledge themselves to care for those rendered helpless by this ruthless disease. We must continue to provide the funds for the care of thousands of children afflicted in this year's epidemic. We must continue to pay for the treatment of the thousands of last year's victims who still need our help. Afflicted of every creed and color, look to you for your support. And infantile paralysis is by no means confined to infants. More and more adults are succumbing to its attacks. Here is Charles Nelson of Denton, Texas, ex-Marine and university student, who, stricken with polio, was in the hospital when his son was born. He is well qualified to teach his healthy infant how to walk because he was so recently obliged to learn all over again himself. These are the Engel girls orphaned by the loss of both mother and father, killed by polio in this season's scourge. These are epidemics children, survivors and victims of a ruthless disease which has left them dependent upon you. Sometimes but one child in a family is touched by polio, sometimes two or more. But all five of the Mika children of Denton, Texas were hit by infantile paralysis. Brother James was the first. Thanks to prompt attention and care, these four are home again. And as they demonstrate their mobility, they urgently hope for the early recovery and return of their brother. Epidemics children urge you to join the polio epidemic emergency drive. They urge you to give and give generously now. Send your dimes and dollars to polio, care of your local post office. Give whatever you wish and for whatever you give. Epidemics children everywhere will thank you.